Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I want to teach you this really cool trick on how to use displacement maps on imagery to give a almost 3D look to flat images. So here you can see what we're going to recreate. We're going to uh, recreate this kind of pan of Abraham Lincoln. Obviously there's no video footage of Abraham Lincoln, so we're going to have to do some creative magic. And we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop 2024 and Adobe After Effects 2024 to do this. So let's kind of hop on over and look at the picture. I went on Wikipedia and just found this stock image of Abe Lincoln. And we're going to actually use one of the brand new neural filters uh, to kind of create a depth map with our character. So I'm going to go ahead and click on neuro filters. And again, you have to be using a more recent version of Photoshop for this but I'm gonna go ahead and find the depth blur. And this takes just a couple seconds to download if you don't already have it downloaded. I'm gonna turn off focus subject and I'm gonna play with the focal distance and the focal range just a little bit. And what I'm looking for is essentially blurry ears and cheeks. And then I wanna make sure that his face itself is clear and crisp. The next step I'm gonna do is go to output depth map only. And when I do that, it creates a series of gradients and grayscaled elements based on the blurriness or the the distance from the camera. I'm going to set it to new layer and hit OK. And I am going to go ahead and name this layer depth. But I have one more step because right now black is not the color that After Effects is going to read as in focus. So I'm going to go to image on this layer adjustments and we're going to do a control I or an invert. This is just going to pull the brighter parts are the focal parts, and the parts that were the blurriest are gonna be black or dark gray. Once you have this, you can save this as a PSD, and you're good to get this going in Adobe After Effects. So again, using the new depth map filter, you can really take any image, whether it's a landscape or it's a, um, a portrait like you see here. I've seen this done in other tutorials with AI pictures, which is really cool. Um, and we're going to go ahead and recreate this scene. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to double click and find our PSD that we just saved. And we're going to make sure it's set to composition. And we're going to go ahead and import that. And what that will give us is essentially this image with two unique layers. Now, what I've done on each of these layers, and I'm going to go ahead and hit delete on these just so you can kind of see them from start. When you first put them in, you have the one layer of the depth map we created, and then we have, if we eyeball that out, the picture of Abe Lincoln. Now on Abe's layer, I'm gonna go to Effects, Distort, Displacement. And I'm gonna grab the displacement map here, and I'm going to set the displacement layer to read the depth map, and that's a really important step. Now, if I change the horizontal and vertical displacement by dragging my mouse, you can see immediately we already get some cool depth effects, but the elephant in the room, you can see that it only goes so far. So there's a little trick to getting this to work. Again, we have some good movement here, but we want to avoid this distortion in the background. And that's a really easy fix. That's just going back to your depth map layer, going to effects and adding a bit of fast blur. So if I go to the blur and sharpen effects and I do a fast block box blur, I can go ahead and smooth that out and immediately you're gonna go, well, nothing's happening. Let me hop back to the background layer and in the displacement layer, I wanna make sure it reads the effects as well as just that black and white image. So I'm gonna change it to effects and masks and immediately what you're gonna see, and we're still a little too large here, but you see we have a pretty cool layer in which, you know, we still have an element of, you know, breaking that kind of fourth wall here, but we can get a little bit more dimension with these small movements. So then what I like to do is I like to actually work a little backwards here. I'm gonna start at my defaults and I'm gonna find the limit of where I can pull Abe in all directions. So you can see I'm getting stretching. So going up, I'm getting just a little less stretching. I'm gonna set keyframes on those as well. I'm gonna move my cursor up just a little bit and we're gonna have him slowly move into place and I'm gonna work backwards and just reset those to their default positions and through the magic of stretching the image, we get this depth. Now we are getting a little off track there. So at any point I can just nudge that in and 
check that out. How cool is that? So the next thing I did was I added a few different layers to this scene. And so let me rebuild that for you. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a new composition. And we're gonna create a new composition that's um, relatively a smaller kind of animation, maybe four seconds or so. Keep it in HD. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in my comps folder. There we go. Awesome. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull that layer, that Lincoln depth composition into this comp. And we're gonna just scale this down. I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard and just kind of scale down my image just to get Abe kind of in frame here. You can see it's going to pull that on. Now, if you have too much space in your composition, you can use a little hot key. You can hit the N key to snap your work area to where your time indicator is. You can right click and say trim to comp and get some really fun elements. The next thing I wanna do is kind of fill in this space on the side. So here I'm gonna add a layer new and we're gonna do a solid. And when the solid screen comes up, I just use the eyedropper. I'm gonna pick a gray solid that's pretty close to that original effect. And we're gonna add some noise to this. So I'm gonna go and look at my noise options and I'm gonna to go to fractal noise. Obviously we have some adjustments to do, but I may just invert that. I'm gonna to go to the transform settings and just scale this down because eventually we're gonna blend this together and just pull the contrast just a little bit. Again, we're gonna mask this out as we go. We're just trying to get something that looks a little closer. Going back to Lincoln, I may go and add a ellipse around him and then that's gonna create a mask. So let me hit MM on my keyboard. And I'm gonna just pull out and soften that mask. This is just gonna make him feel like a little more part of this background that you can kind of see happening here. And you know we're already on a good track. Some other layers and textures that I put in is I went ahead and dragged an old paper texture. And that's gonna kind of cover everything. And I'm gonna set that to, uh, in this case, I think multiply just to kind of continue to blend. And if your mask isn't blending, don't be afraid to get your pen tool and add a few more points to that mask. And once you kind of start adding those points, you can go in and just manipulate them as you see fit. So again, if I go to my mask path here and I highlight just this point, I can kind of deal with some of those sharp edges that you saw just to get this lightning look as well. So what we're gonna do next is uh, we're gonna kind of copy some of the uh, Gettysburg address. We're gonna build this out uh, into something that, um, again, has a little more depth to it and uh, works out rather well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my text tool and I'm gonna draw a text bounding box. So I want paragraph and I'm gonna paste some of this uh, Gettysburg address here into my scene. And I'm gonna just scale it out a little bit so I don't have orphan text and zoom in. And I'm using just, this This is Rage Italic. You can use any kind of script font. Uh, it's a little dark, so I'm gonna go in and undo, whoops, draw that out again. There we go, perfect. I'm gonna do the opacity just a little bit. So T for opacity, turn that down just slightly. We can even do something like a blending mode to get it to work onto the background. I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna do toggle and switches mode. I'm gonna make this a 3D layer and I'm gonna just give it some, uh, just some, some 3D tilt just to give it some visual intrigue. And again, I can kind of scale this up. I can create different movements of this uh, as I see fit. So I'm starting to layer this element as you can see. Um, but I still wanna bring a little more dimension to it. So now that I'm using kind of 3D layers, I can even continue to turn on some 3D layers on like my solid. Let me add maybe a new light. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a simple point light or a spotlight. It's really up to you. In this case, spotlight looks pretty good. And we're gonna hit AA on our keyboard and we're gonna play a little bit with the intensity of the spotlight. We're gonna just move the position just a little bit more. And we have things like fall off, radius, we have cone feather. So again, we can pull that feather out just a little bit. In our case, we wanna maybe move it just a little bit more back so we don't have such a harsh kind of edge to it. This is just gonna give us a little more atmosphere, so to speak, 
to our final piece. So again, just a little more cone feather in there to kind of frame Abe. And the very last thing I did was added a dust layer. These are all stock uh, elements that you can find rather quickly. I made it bigger than it needs to be. And I set that stock layer by toggling switching modes. I can set it to screen, hit it with a quick lower opacity. And then what I actually did was set a few just basic scale keyframes for the whole piece. So I want to kind of just scale it ever so slowly to feel like it's dusted. So grab the little bit of ease. And there you have it. Just with a little bit of tweaking, we now have a pretty cool 3D effect that gives Abraham Lincoln some life and actually makes him look 3D. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I can't wait to catch you in the next one. Thanks, everybody.